This is History Myths and Mythconceptions. And today's Mythconception is Stoicism Promotes Apathy. Stoicism is the most popular school of Hellenistic philosophy, and it attracts a reasonable amount of attention these days. But sometimes a cursory examination of its teachings leads to a certain misunderstanding of some of the core concepts of Stoicism. One of them is apathy, and the whole idea that this deterministic philosophy somehow promotes total compliance with the environment, go with the flow approach, and encourages people to lose any emotions. Indeed, traditionally Stoics wanted to achieve apatheia. The Greek word apatheia is not the same as modern apathy. It can be translated as absence of patience, but that's not very precise. Seneca tried to find a proper Latin equivalent and decided to use the phrase tranquillitas animi, tranquility of the soul, which is actually somewhat closer to Epicurean ataraxia, but that's a different subject. So yes, it is tranquility of the soul that can be achieved through control of your passions. Otherwise, these passions might control you and your actions. First and foremost, it's about control. Reason shouldn't be corrupted by passions. Now, what are these passions exactly? There are four main passions in Stoicism. Original names for them are in Greek, so occasionally it is a bit hard to give only one precise translation. These passions are fear, sorrow, can be translated as distress, immoderate appetite, can be translated as lust, and pleasure, can be translated as delight. All of them have subdivisions. There are also good passions, so to speak. Technically, not passions, but more like rational emotions. And they directly correspond to bad passions, being their opposites. So the opposite of fear would be caution, a reasonable aim to escape future evils. There is no opposite of sorrow or distress, because there is no evil in the present moment for a wise man. The opposite of immoderate appetite or lust is wish or a will guided by the reason, a will for virtue based on the correct judgment. It is literally translated into Latin as voluntas, will. And the opposite of pleasure, which is the false judgment of what is good, is the correct judgment, joy. Obviously, all three good rational emotions, just like the four irrational passions, have subdivisions. So no, it's not about apathy and not about feeling nothing and being a robot. But since Stoicism is a deterministic philosophy with a free will, and that's why, as I said before, there is no evil in the present moment for a wise man, it leads to another misunderstanding. Compliance with fate equals compliance with pretty much everything. It is probably even misinterpreted by some of the followers of modern Stoicism, an offshoot of Roman Stoicism. While indeed Stoic philosophers always stressed that you should be content with what is given to you, that doesn't mean being a passive spectator or doing something that is considered morally wrong. You have to comply with nature, the universe, but you don't comply with evil. You have to do what's right, what leads to virtue. That is your purpose. That's exactly why you are here. So the Stoics of the past were not really into obedience or submission to the authority of corrupted people. That's why if we read the existing historical sources of, say, the first century, we can see a graveyard of essentially Stoic martyrs, which includes senators like Seneca or Thrasia, or Berius Uranus, and later Helvidius Priscus. And yeah, obviously there was Cato the Younger before them, who basically set this 
very Socratic trend of I will do what is right, even if it means death. I will not yield to evil.